Hey everyone, welcome to my channel Bend the Rules where we talk about JavaScript things in depth. And today we're going to talk about for loops and especially how for loops work in case of a late declaration. So you might think initially that for loops are so simple, right? What's there to discuss about it? But let's start with a question instead. You already know of a complex example involving for, where, let and set timeouts. So let's look at that. So this is how it looks and it's a very common problem. So if you have a for loop which you know increments the index and then you try to print that index using set timeout. So if you're using where index then it always prints 10 instead of printing 0 to 9. But in case of a for plus let it actually prints the variables correctly. So even after set timeout it actually prints the correct variables from 0 to 9. So why is that? Let's talk about where first and this is understandable but okay where is using a single index a single variable which is getting modified in every iteration. So when you have gone through all the 10 iterations the value of index is going to be 10 and that's when set timeout is going to run. But then why does it work in case of let right because we are still declaring one single variable we are still modifying the same variable so how come this set timeout is printing the values correctly so let's understand that in a little bit more depth so we are going to look at for plus let very very soon but before that let's take a moment to understand how a for loop looks and how for plus where works so this is probably something that you already understand but let's take a moment to you know get back to our basics so that we have something to compare to when you are looking at for plus let. So this is how a for loop looks like. Now in the head of for you have three parts. So you have an initializer where you typically introduce our variables. Then you have a test expression where you compare and say true or false which will decide whether the for loops continues or stops. And then you have an increment expression. So this is typically run at the end of iteration. So this will like in increment our variable so that you know the condition is going to change at one point. Okay. So now the thing is that all these three parts are actually optional. So I could write nothing in all of these three parts. Okay. So this is going to be a valid for loop. Okay. So I can skip all the three parts because they are optional and this is going to work perfectly. Although yeah it's going to be an infinite loop so you are going to need to use something like a break statement within your for body so that it you know breaks out of the for loop at some point. Okay so going back to our initializer we already know that you can use a where or a let in here right. But the interesting thing is that this is a declaration list so it's not supposed to be you know just one declaration uh, you can just initialize multiple variables also so I can just do a comma b comma c and even put some initial values for some of them okay so what else right we have a where we have a let what else can you do here so instead of a let you can also put a const in here okay so const is typically not very useful because you can't really increment it and you know hence your condition is not going to change but yeah you can also put a const in here. The let and const declarations are actually called as something like a lexical declaration okay so because they are like block scoped. Okay so what else can we do here where let const is done. Now what you can do is we can actually remove the declaration part so you can remove const and this is still going to be valid. So you can write any expression in here. Now this is an assignment expression. So we are assigning index to 0 which is why it's valid. But it can be any other expression also. So I could just do foo right. I can just call a function that's also valid. Okay. So the next part is our test expression. So this is supposed to return something true or false. If not it's going to be converted to boolean anyway and then if it is false then the algorithm stops the for loop but if it is true then it continues with the next iteration. Okay. Now the thing is this part is optional right you can skip the test expression. If you skip it then it defaults to true so it will always continue with the loop right. So as you mentioned in that case you have to use something like a break statement within your for body when you want to end the for loop. Okay. What is the last part? So this one is simple. You can just uh, you know put any expression in here. We typically incremental variables, but yeah, you can again do anything else in here, right? What is the last part? 
our body right so this is how you typically write it we start a block and then write multiple statements within this but technically speaking you're only supposed to write a single statement in here so this is the simplest form of a for body so you're supposed to just write one statement in there but statements actually can be of multiple types so one interesting thing is i can actually just put a semicolon at the end just one semicolon and that's a valid kind of a statement this is called as an empty statement right it doesn't do anything but this is a valid for loop now the other kind of statement is what you use normally which is a block statement so in case of a block statement we actually start and you know have a opening and closing curly brace and then you can write a statement list in there so you can write multiple statements in here okay so this is the form that we are normally using so we looked at the syntax of a for loop now let's look at how for plus where works again not much of a surprise here so just for recap so what do we do at the start of a for loop we're going to run our initializer so we're going to evaluate where index equal to zero so notice we are still in the current scope so this index is going to be declared in the outer function scope of this for loop right so what that means is when you actually come out of the for loop this index is still going to be available okay so you ran our initializers then what do we do so for every iteration we need to check our condition and if that condition is true then you go ahead and run the body okay so that's exactly what we will do so if index less than z, uh, 10 then run the body so this is the whole body right so you're going to run this thing right here now as you know that index less than 10 is going to be true here because you know index is still zero so it runs this body for the first time right so our first iteration is complete now what do you do before moving on to the second iteration so of course we are going to run our increment operation right so we're going to just run index plus plus here so now index plus plus you know con changes index to one and then if we run our body for the second time uh, this time also our test is going to be true because index is still less than 10 1 is less than 10 so it will again go ahead and run the body so it will continue like this till index plus plus increments the value from 9 to 10 right so at that point this for loop is going to end now we're going to finally look at how for plus let works so these are a the few things that you want to look at along the way so the first thing is it seems like we are declaring this index only once by ourselves but each of the set timeout is also able to print their own value of index correctly so does that mean that every iteration somehow gets a new index does that mean that index gets redeclared multiple times well we'll see and the second thing is what happens to index plus plus when is this expression going to get run okay so let's actually start the algorithm the first thing that it does is that before even running anything in the for loop it creates a new block scope okay so even if you're running anything it just creates a new block scope let's say we call this a overall block scope because it's actually going to create multiple block scope along the way okay we have our overall block scope and what do we do first we run our initializer right we evaluate that so it's just going to run let index equal to zero okay so this initializer now notice that this is a let declaration and we have our overall block scope here so that means this index is only going to be available within this overall block scope so as soon as you go outside this as soon as you go outside the for loop index is not going to be available anymore okay so cool we have run our initializer now we are going to go through each iteration so how does the first iteration work so again before you actually go into the iteration and check your condition and stuff like that whenever you enter the iteration it creates a new block scope okay so we entered our first iteration and it created let's say a new scope called scope one so every iteration gets their own scope okay so now you know normally we are going to just test our condition and run our body but there is one more step before that okay so it's actually not going to use the index that was declared outside instead even in the first iteration it redeclares the variable name okay so from this statement it can figure out that okay what were the variable names which are mentioned here remember this is a variable list 
So I can actually have declare multiple variables here. So whatever variables were declared here, let's say index was declared here. So the same thing will get redeclared for every iteration. Okay. So we redeclared index fine. But what is going to be its initial value? Because we need some value, right? If you're going to access it later on. So in that case, what you're going to do is it's going to initialize index from the value of index in the last scope. So here the last scope was our overall scope, right? So there the value of index should still be zero. So it's going to just assign the same value to this new index. Okay. So whenever you enter a new iteration, it creates a new scope and this new scope gets their own index with the value copied from the last scope. Okay. So till now it's zero. Then what do we do? That's uh, just as we did for where we're going to just test our condition. So if index less than 10, then just run this body. Okay. Great. So we have completed our first iteration at this point. See, we have to actually run this index plus plus at some point so that the second iteration actually makes sense. But we are not actually going to run index plus plus at the end of first loop. Okay. So this, sorry. So we are not actually going to do this. Okay. So you might, you know, this is more like a misconception. We think that, you know, index plus plus this thing actually runs at the end of every loop. But that's not exactly the case. We'll look at why. Okay. So index plus plus is not going to run here. Instead, it's going to move on to the next iteration. Okay. So scope two, new block scope. And again, the same thing, copy the value from the last scope by redeclaring. So let index and now the last scope is my scope one. So it's going to copy the value of index from here. So it should again be zero. So again, index equal to zero, right? Now, what do we do? Do we just test our condition again? But well, that doesn't make much of a sense, right? Because our index is still zero. If we're going to just do that, it's never going to end, right? So we need to run our index plus plus somewhere. And this is where the index plus plus is going to run. Okay. So instead of running at the end of the loop, we actually run index plus plus at the start of the next loop. Okay. So instead of running in first iteration, we actually run at the start of second iteration on this new variable, which is created for that iteration. Okay. So now what index is going to become one, right? So now we'll again go ahead and do console.log index. And again, this is going to give me the correct value one. And let's look at the second line, right? So we're doing a set timeout and then running console.log here so okay just missed one part it's still going to have that check so if index less than 10 but it's still one right so it will pass that check cool so the second statement in our body is that we do set timeout and then console.log index right but if you notice this index is the index in its own scope so this iteration got its own scope, own variables. So this index is never going to change whether you access it synchronously or whether you access it even after 10 seconds, right? It doesn't matter because after you have run your body, right? After we have run our body here, executed our body, we don't do anything else in the scope. Even if you look at the previous uh, first iteration, right? Look at this. We ran our body at this point but we didn't do anything else here. We didn't run our index plus plus in the same body. Okay. So you always move on to the next scope, the next iteration, and then do whatever you want to do there. So that means whether your body runs some synchronous code or runs some asynchronous code, they're going to get the same value of index. This is exactly why you don't do index plus plus at the end, right? If you can think about it, we actually did index plus plus here, right? Then what would happen is this line is going to print zero, but the next line is going to print one, which is not really, you know, intuitive. So this is why it's always going to run uh, this index plus plus at the next iteration. Okay, cool. So at this point, our index plus, you know, index value is basically just one. And just like our second iteration, all the other iterations are going to run in the exact same way. Okay, so no more complications here. So from the next iteration, it's again going to take the value of index from the last one. And in the last one, it is already one, right? So it takes one, then it does plus plus, so it becomes two here. And you know, then it logs the correct values, right? So two is less than 10. So it continues like this now till, you know, this index becomes 10, right? So that's how for plus let works.
I hope it answers uh, some of the questions we have, right? Let's recap that. So this let index, right? It actually is going to get redeclared multiple times. Okay. So this whole thing, so index equal to zero, that is only going to run in the overall scope. But these variables that you mention here, right? It can be index. You can also declare like multiple variables here. Okay. So all these variables are going to get redeclared in every iteration so every iteration gets new scope and they re then they redeclare this variable index but the value that is going to get is going to be the value which is from the previous scope okay so here it will be zero but later on it will be you know something like one two things like that okay so it does redeclare this variable multiple times and the second thing is this index plus plus it actually doesn't run at the end of that scope it runs at the uh, you know start of next scope so one common mistake that people do is, you know, let's say if someone asks you to rewrite this, someone, you know, is going to remove it from here and he's going to actually add it here. Okay. And, you know, this is our normal intuitive uh, logic that, hey, this is must be how things are working internally, but that's not correct. So if you do this, you will again have the same problem. This will print zero, but this will print one. That's not what happens, right? Okay. So. Hopefully now we have like some idea of how for plus let works and the last thing I'd like to do is you know just take a moment okay relax for a bit and think about why for plus let is so complex okay so we understand how it works now but why is it you know not intuitive why is it uh, hard to understand given our normal understanding of JavaScript right so I have again written the for loop in the simplified form. So using only one statement, right? So if you look at this form, we don't see any curly braces here, right? We don't see a new block scope or, you know, closing of a block scope that we are creating ourselves, right? So mentally, we associate this curly braces to block scope. So whenever we see that, we are kind of okay that, hey, you know, this must be creating a new block scope. Right. It doesn't matter if the language internally considers that to be a block statement, but whenever you see a curly brace, we associate it with the fact that a block scope, you know, might be created internally. But in this simple form, there is no block scope yet. The language is internally created, uh, creating a lot of internal scopes. In fact, it's going to create n plus one block scope, so one for every iteration and one for the overall, right? But there is no visual clue for that. If you look at this statement, there is no way of intuitively knowing that that is happening, right? Because there is no curly brace. So I think this is one of the reasons why it's hard to understand, right? So even if you are using let, because we don't see any block scope, and especially, of course, we don't see n number of block scopes, right? So it's very hard to guess that first of all, it's at all creating a block scope, and the second thing is that it's going to create so many block scopes, right? So I think this dissociation of what we see and what is happening internally is the you know main uh, problem, right? It's the main source of confusion. So that's all about today's video where we looked at how for loop works and its intricacies. Hope you learned something and I'll see you guys later in my next video where hopefully we'll talk about something, you know, again something more interesting from the specification. So thank you and bye bye.